welcome back you wonderful people and this is basically a continuation of the last episode there's a few more things i wanted to cover but i didn't want to cram too much into the last one so hopefully this should be quite quick so continuing on with tables so we'll go back into that script from the last episode and the first thing i wanted to talk about is uh, here at the top where we say how many times we want to iterate through this loop now we do have the option just to write the number ourselves but of course if we added in uh, an extra value into this table right or we added in an extra character to our team then we're not going to loop through them and our whole logic is going to break now thankfully there is a way to actually find out however many items are contained within this table. All you need to do is uh, just put a hashtag in front of it. So if I print out Gnome Rovers, and right before it, I put a, a hashtag, okay? And if I run that now, we will see down the output, it should say the number five, there you go. So there's five items in that table. So instead of saying for i equals one comma five, you can just put if you're using a table, that is just hashtag and the name of the table. So then it will loop through however many items are in that table. Pretty easy stuff. So the next thing I want to talk about a bit more on key and value pairs, because you might have seen a loop uh, that looks a little bit like this for index comma value in pairs brackets gnome rovers do you might have seen a loop a little bit like that before or sometimes people write it like underscore v or i v personally i prefer index comma value right so what's going on here let's um comment all this out first of all and if we remember when we printed out the table so print gnome rovers and we run that then in the output we can see the table click that little arrow and we get the list of everything that's contained within it so on the right these are the values okay so the value is this gnome code object right each of these is one of our values in the table and on the left is its index or its key when we were just doing our very basic for loop over here let me move this down out of the way if i can get it where is it ah, there we go got the cursor in the right position so when we're doing it like this well we have to use this i variable each time okay because we're using this i iterator now another way of doing it is saying for index value and then grabbing pairs so we'd be taking each of these values then the index and the value okay so then if i print out print index comma value then i can get both of those values okay so it's like a a, a pair so let's run the game now and i got rid of my output which wasn't too smart let's open it back up so then we can see one name code two name code three name code and we get the nice list there so if you're working with tables which is what you'll mostly use for loops for, you'll pretty much always use this pairs function, okay? Pairs is very useful for hopping through tables. You don't normally uh, use uh, a numbered one like this, but you might do. And another one you might see as well as pairs is something called ipairs, okay? It's quite similar, but if you get to a nil value along the way, then it will stop running through it. Um, so let's hop through the, the names table instead. So we'll go through the random names table. And then after Pomeo, we're going to just type nil and then a comma as well. So we've got Nomeo, Pomeo, nil, and then it continues with the list. And so if I run now, let's see what happens. Open the output back up. We've got Nomeo, Pomeo, and oh, then it's stopped. So we can see there's nothing after Pomeo. Now the reason for that is that iPairs will stop whenever it hits a nil value, okay? It won't continue going through the table. 
Whereas a normal pairs function, if you use that, it will keep going. So now we can see we get one, two, and then three is nil, so it just ignores it. And then four, Jamio, Camio, and so on. It's a bit of a mouthful, that, isn't it? But yeah, you'll want to use pairs most of the time. Um, so there was just a few little extra add-on comments I wanted to make. Uh, and the next episode, we're going to start looking at some services. And we'll learn all about them. What are services? Well, you'll have to watch the episode to find out. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.